Hello Eco Warriors and welcome to 2021. Last year has been such a struggle for many people, but now people are looking for a new way of living, of life, of recycling, of living their purpose, of, you know, not trusting the world, I guess, in some way. I'm not going to get into conspiracy theories or anything like that. Everyone can think in their own way that they choose. It's just at the moment we need to think for ourselves, for our families, for living. And a lot more people now are waking up to the opportunity of living self-sufficiently. We all need to do our part if we are to live in this new world coming up. Social distancing, working from home, now people are starting to look at getting land and branching outwards beyond the cities. Enabling themselves to live at home, work from home, be with their families, education from home, work from home. For families, this works great. For the lone wolves out there, the hermits who live, who walk the lonely path and are content in their happiness of being with themselves, then this time works for anybody. In the many years that I've lived like in an off-grid um, world, in a, in a way, it's been a great one. Just want to give you some insight into what to prepare yourself if you are to think about living off grid or being self sufficient. There's some things you need to be aware of. Now, where there is food, you're going to get visitors unless you really. Um, patch in holes and everything. What I'm talking about is that I've noticed with not so much cob buildings, but um, I've lived in many different um, terrains um, across Europe and especially England and helped sort of, you know, tidy up and design sort of eco houses, eco homes, some very small, some big, um, off grid, uh, water sources. Um, one person had a, a water turbine um, from the local river which gave them energy all year round which is great unless the river was frozen up then <laughs> they, they have enough they have enough power all year round um, the problem is I've noticed that living in places where you only have uh, solar panels or wind that especially in England that the power can drop during winter time because of the less sun so you need to compensate with uh, a wind turbine which some days it's not even sunny, it's no wind, so that doesn't work so well. So the best uh, energy source that I've found to be living off grid is to have a water source nearby, uh, a river or a stream where you can run consistently 24 seven, a water turbine, a very powerful water turbine, and that will generate electricity all year round. Saying that solar panels are easy to set up, it's just plug and play basically, you just make sure you know what you're doing, uh, very very simple for, for me I had a little setup where I had three batteries obviously positive negative positive negative positive negative you um, connect all the positives and all the negatives together and then from battery one battery one and battery three you connect the in uh, the, the controller to the to the positive on on battery one and the negative on battery three and you have those going to the controller. And then on the opposite side, where you have the, the um, negative and positive of the controller going to the batteries, you have the opposite, which you have the inverter going. So it charges that as a whole. Very simple, the solar panels and the wind turbine connect to the controller, the wires, and then the wires, the two wires, the positive and negative from the controller go to the, go to the batteries. And then you have the inverter, which takes, takes the power. It's very simple, once you know what you're doing. Just have to make sure that you have a system that is 12 volts, um, or 24 volts, or 48, however, what the system requires. Just make sure you look online for, you know, what make sure what you're doing. And also the position of where you build. I've built a few places uh, in England where it hasn't been south facing, it's been in a very shaded environment where there have been trees around and then the trees are getting so big now that 
Um, in the summertime, it just blocks out light, so you get less power for solar panels. So the position where you build is very important. That's one important thing for energy, for getting the energy, is uh, making sure that you are south facing where you get in the sun daily to, to warm the place inside. Um, the benefit that I've, I've lived in, in, in one place, um, which was outside of Somerset, uh, was a lovely like cob build. And it, throughout the summer when we had really hot heat, when it was like 30 degrees, I can't remember what month that was, it was cool inside. It was very comfortable. You know, I didn't get hot sleeping. I need to be in a cool room. So that worked out very, very well, very nicely. Um, and I noticed that when I went back there in the winter time to do some maintenance and stuff, that there was a big problem with like rodents, you know, mice and rats. Um, they can eat through the cob very easily. It's very soft for them. Like if they smell food or you cooking or you've got some warmth in there, they want to come and join you. <laughs> so that's one thing that I felt very uncomfortable. I had to put things in like metal boxes when I went to stay there. Um, bread, they seem to love bread and sweet potatoes. So um, yeah, went there to patch up some holes and stuff. And now I've heard that they're not getting in, which is really, really good. Um, problem is you can hear them. If you don't seal the property very well that you're building, then they can eat through anything but rock or concrete, which we don't want to be using. However, in some places it's important to use to seal the areas that they can't get in. So one place that was built by a person, they had built um, a wooden floor, which was all hollow underneath and, and they had cob around and the rodents had ate through, through the cob underneath uh, and made a hole somewhere underneath the floor floor and they were coming up between where the floorboards and the cob wall met. So that space in there, that's where they made more holes through and they came into the space. So once that was all patched, it was great, but then you could hear them. Um, a hay bale, um, hay bale building, which I helped build, um, a bit north of England, um, they, they seem to love to, to nest in, inside the hay bales. So it's like, although hay bales is a great material to build with, you need to make sure that on the outside wall, you're having like a, a breathable membrane somehow, uh, where you have like, it's best to probably patch it with bricks, you know, brick work. So the rodents can come in and make nests inside the walls because that's the only problem is sometimes a little bit of smell can happen. And also, um, yeah, the noises, you know, you can hear them like scratching away. You can, if you're sleeping there, you can hear the noises. It can be, these are the, the negative things of living off grid. Um, going back to the power, that if the power drops, then you don't have any power. You're, you're in the middle of nowhere. You have no power because the power's dropped. So it's important to make sure that you are equipped all year round, especially the winter time when there is no sun. You know, get as many panels you need and, you know, have a breaker where you can um, stop the power being charged and make sure you've got enough power and batteries. In the summertime, you'll have unlimited power. But in the wintertime, when there's less light, less wind, um, yeah, unless you have a water turbine. So that is something that I would love to look into in the future, uh, getting land and having a place where there is water, a river or a stream, a bab babbling brook or something which can help power the, the energy. The other thing to think about is that you, if you are looking to be off grid all year round, it is, it's not impossible. It's just, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of hard work. You're in the garden like pretty much every day Making sure you're getting rid of bugs. Um, I was growing uh, potatoes this year. I was growing fruit. I was growing all sorts of things and the rabbits or whatever came in and ate a lot of the stuff. So um, to get rid of that, especially the rabbits, which Et seems, seems to love to eat in the leaves of like um, turnips, um, all sorts of root vegetables. Anything that you grow, they seem to want to eat the top of. So you need to make sure that you cage around, um, cage around uh, the allotment that you have so they can't get in. Another great way is using tires, car tires, to stack them up high enough that rabbits can't eat or climb up. Um, and that worked very well. I had them high enough where the rabbits couldn't get in and eat 
like the, the beetroot leaves, the rhubarb leaves and all sorts of things. And then having patches where I cage things in. And that seemed to work very, very well. So yeah, it's not all pretty and harmless as we think. It's not as easy. It's kind of like the modern world that we live in, going to the supermarket, getting food and just flicking a switch on for the gas is um, <laughs> is always you know a luxury actually. Um, however, living off grid and making it yourself can be lovely. It's just it's a full time job. Um, summertime, you don't need much, you know, heating because the the internal space of a especially an Earth ship um, will heat itself. Um, however, in the winter time, that um, you need to, throughout the year, especially in the summer when if you live in a place of lots of trees around, you need to collect those and you need a big place to, to store the wood. You need to store enough wood for the winter um, and also having the power to chop it as well. Uh, unless you have a chainsaw, chainsaw or something electrical to chop the wood, um, you need to make sure that you have enough energy or, or resources to then chop the wood itself. Things will grow if you live in a place that is um, surrounded by nature, surrounded by trees like woodland, especially woodland. There's, there's, there's ample wood, wood to keep you going through the winter if you have a big size wood. But then there's a lack of sunlight. So you need to place the, the home that you want to live in in a place where you get a, enough sun and then behind, behind the home is all the woodland and stuff. So saying that, you, you don't just need to build your home, like kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, lounge, or however, if it's just one big open space, you need to also have an outbuilding where you can store either a, um, an external extra freezer, uh, an extra freezer during, um, you know, hibernation, <laughs> lockdown times, um, being off grid is very, very important, having that, and also a storage space where you can store wood. And this is like, you know, falling down trees, branches, and that's a good thing for starting fires is small twigs. So every time you see like branches falling from the trees, you just collect them, store them in this outside building and then throughout the year they will dry out and there'll be good firewood to keep to start the fire going. And also a good place to keep the firewood itself. Um, I sometimes use a mixture of coal and, and wood depending on how much wood I've got throughout the year. Then I use coal uh, to keep it going. Coal burns, can burn brighter and for longer. So it's a really good resource. Again, it's expenses that you're buying from elsewhere. Um, but it's always good to salvage you know, your own wood if possible. There are also a lot of places like who have skips, who have wood, who don't, you know, places that, you know, especially if you go to, I went to, um, an industrial state many years ago and it was this um, roof building company where they were building roof struts to build build houses it was, it was a lot and they had all these offcuts they're about this size just little offcuts and they went all this big compactor and i went there and said hey uh, what happens to the the wood where does it go and they go oh it just gets take, taken to recycle and i said like, do you sell any so i bought like a quite a big bag for like five pounds and like yeah just help yourself because it costs us to to, to get rid of it, you know, they come and collect it. So, you know, they don't buy it from them. So I said, oh, can I come down once a week and, you know, get, you know, fill my car with it? And they go, yeah. So it was really good wood. It wasn't tanninized. It wasn't the green painted stuff. It was just normal, like pine or wood. Um, two by fours, very easy to uh, cut and split. And I found that was good, um, good kindling for, for wood. Um, yeah, so, Living off grid isn't always pleasant and easy as you think. There are a lot of challenges involved. It can take a long time to uh, to feel settled, to fill a home, and you come with other challenges as well, like um, you know water, water source. You can have a well, um, but sometimes you've got to think about bacteria. Uh, I installed a, um, a UV filter a pump from the well. And that got rid of bacteria and everything, but like, it's is it healthy to drink? I mean, getting that tested as well once a year can be expensive. Um, you know, five or six hundred pounds can be expensive to get it properly tested uh, or, or treated as well. And also, where you live, if you live in the middle of a farmland and they're using pesticides, and if you have a well, all that 
all that chemicals can go into the water that you're drinking. So it's good for like washing yourself or just washing dishes and things, but like you just got to be careful with like bacteria and everything like that. Um, so yeah, key things, key things of building a place off grid is is water really. If you live in like the Netherlands or you live in Norway and you have like you can capture the the snow melt or there are usually a lot of springs or or rivers that flow through that are fresh water. They're usually semi-clean. You just need a filter to get rid of the debris, you know, like little pebbles or rocks or seaweed if it's there. Um, yeah, you just got to make sure that what you're doing is safe. You're looking after yourself. There's a good film called uh, Gone Into the Wild, I believe it is. Um, yeah, very interesting. Um, the ending it wasn't too pleasant. Um, spoilers, so if you haven't watched it, then please skip this to another you know, 20 seconds of stuff when I haven't talked about it. But basically, um, I saw it many years ago and um, the end of the movie, I remember the, the guy had picked the wrong mushroom and I believe had died uh, in, in the movie anyway. So it's like, you know, you have to be careful with foraging. Make sure you really know what you're doing. You know, go with an expert. Have not just one small lesson, but spend like a week, you know, going to a place of foraging food, um, and really know what you're doing. You just need to be safe. And once you know everything, you can be very happy, very content, um, you know, with with yourself, with with life, uh, and living off grid. Um, and once you're all set up, I, I've heard that, yeah. Once the eco, the Earth ship, you know, your home has been built, uh, where you're settled, it can be a biggest ex expense. First of all, uh, even if you re resource the the um, the materials, it's the building, it's the labor, it can take a long time, there's a lot of hard labor, a lot of like packing car tires for, for making the walls, the plumbing, the electrics, buying the solar panels, the batteries, um, the damp coarse membrane for underneath the floor, depending on where you live in the world, um, insulation, um, you know, then there's paint and plastering and then things like cookers, it's, it's everything, you're building a whole house. And that's quite a big expense. If you have the big expense, first of all, you can easily build a house with, you know, a couple of thousand pounds that is quite small, but something that is very really luxurious, which for a family, which is clean, tidy, has all, you know, everything that you need, um, can can be a big expense. Another thing that I just thought about as well, top of my mind, about building a place, um, especially if you think about roundhouses, you think, okay, I'll just have my kitchen, my bedroom, different places storage storage is a big thing when you're building if you're thinking about building something off-grid uh, low impact however it is storage is a very very important thing to be aware of because without storage you can't store things and you don't believe how much storage you have especially keeping the place tidy so it's like having seating where you have self-made boxes where you can like store things underneath um, a great idea for beds is that the bed that you sleep on that you can lift up and underneath you can put like storage uh, for clothes, uh, towels, bedding, um, especially things that you're not going to access every day. Um, and then there's things like food as well. Food is a big thing off grid. Like you need to buy in bulk. You know, if you live really far away from the the city, the town, or local place where you can get food, and you want to be off grid. You don't want to be traveling every day to the shop. You know, you want to keep your expenses down for traveling. Um, and especially if it, it snows as well. Um, snows or, again, the lockdown situation, a lot of people panic by. But if you have things in bulk that you can store food, like long life food, pastas, um, soups, it could be tinned goods. Um, you need to make sure that they are rodent free, that rodents aren't going to get to them. They're in a cool, dry place. And um, yeah, storage is, is very important, you know, like even if you live a less materialistic life, there are also things that you have such as clothes, small items like, you know, charging stuff if you have like phones or equipment or whatever job you have. If you're a painter or an artist, then you have this room, you know, and also working from home. If you have an off an off-grid place, then it's important to have your own working space where you can work from home and and separate that work life from, from home life. So you have like your study or then a toilet for that study and a little place where you can just make tea and then like 
you have your own space to like, if you're doing filming, like what I do, um, or yeah, you're, you're an artist, you, you're, you work in like quilting or textiles, or you're a painter, or you're just working online, it's important if you are working from home to have that separate space, then you have your home, which is a place where you can really enjoy it. Otherwise you feel like you're always at home, you never get away. So a perfect setting for building like an earth ship is at the end part where you have access to light, like a little garden area, a small place where you can just like have a sink and like make tea, just like, you know, separate the kitchen place from, from that, or you have like tea breaks and stuff. Just have a separate place where you're not trapped in there all day, but you have the access to, to just shut yourself away and concentrate on what you're supposed to do. And that's very important. And that's what I've got here in this space, in this room that, you know, I'm on an off-grid place and I have this little studio that I have where I can record. And, you know, life is good, you know, life is, it's it's simple, everything's set up, I have my own space for working. And and the rest out there is for, for, um, for, for living, you know, sleeping, food, family, um, you know, friends, and walking the dog. <laughs> so it's, it's beautiful. So that's everything on top of my head of, of living in a place for, you know, on and off in different places. I've experienced um, communities. Um, one thing, and love to those who are out there who have communities, but there are some communities that are very, very rustic, um, not so clean. Um, they're in the process of building. And then when you are building a community or a place, then this is one important thing to think about is that when you're building a place, you need to make sure that you have a place for yourself to, to sleep, to rest, to make food. So having like a, and this is a really good idea, that if you're building an airship or whatever off-grid thing, like building that you're doing, it's gonna take some time. If you can travel there every day and build, then great. But you really need to be living and working on the place that you're, you're living. So at the front of the property or somewhere where is close to where you are building, then have an outbuilding where in the future, well, at current, whilst you're building the earth ship, where you can sleep, you can make food, you, you know, you have social time, you can work from if need to be. And then when you move from there into your like, earth ship or, or off-grid living place, then that place that you were living in whilst it was being built, then that place can be turned into a storage place for like firewood, um, for a workshop, for, for like shed, for supplies, for everything that, all the building stuff that you've had here, but in this place can now be put into this smaller place, you know, for storing wood, extra food. Um, it's a really good idea. So it's like you're, you're utilizing space even more so. So yeah, it's, as I say, it's not as easy as you think. Um, living off grid can be challenging, um, but like if you have everything you need around you, if you have the right abundance, if you are working, if you are making a living, then it's, you have everything you need. So that's everything I can think at the top of my head. Um, if you're planning to build it yourself, it can take a long time. It can be frustrating because you just want your home finished there and then, but be patient. Um, another, another important thing is about expenses that once you've bought the land and you have the planning permission accepted and you can build something, um, then it's like, it's, it's time, you know, it's, it's, it's time building, building whatever you're building. Just be patient. And along the way, if expenses are a problem, then you can always find materials for free. If you go to like tile places, um, bathroom and tile centers, they usually have a lot of tiles that are thrown into a skip. That's where I got a lot of tiles from another project that I got them all for free. I was able to build a shower and a toilet area with the only thing that cost me was the grouting or the, the, the tile adhesive at the back. And I made like a mosaic. And other places I, I've done like just put tiles and put them up on the wall. And, you know, I, I showed the person how that, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything to, to build it. Just, you just have to get the adhesive or the screws. So there are places like Free Cycle. I know at the current 2021 now, that the COVID situation around the world that, okay, social distancing may be a problem, but there are many things around the world that people don't want. Uh, one person's uh, garbage is another person's treasure. And if you can clean that up, if you can utilize it or turn it into building, it could just be bricks that people have left over, roof tiles, 
uh, wood, even if it has nails in, you can use it as firewood or, or whatever. So everything can be recycled and that's the important thing of, of life is that you don't have to buy everything from new, that you can find resources that are free. Um, farming, for example, I did one project with um, hay bales. Um, it was no good for the, the animal feed for the, for the farm but it was perfect for building because it had dried out, it wasn't green, had no nutrition into it, it was just hay, <laughs> straw. So that was really good for doing some cob work. Um, cob is sand, hay and clay if you didn't realise. Very good, uh, the best insulator um, that is man-made. So anyway, that's all I have to say right now. Um, I'm hoping you enjoyed um, my ramblings about eco-living and living off-grid. Um, you know, it's a challenging time and building your own thing, you learn a lot of things along the way. So make sure you do enough research online. Um, take a building class, take an electrical course, which is very important to do, where you can do your own electrical work, your own plumbing, your own wiring and getting checked over and it, that can cost you less in the future. Um, but whatever it is, you have the resources to do so. Just make sure you do all the research and, and knowledge that you have online. Um, and just make sure you keep them safe and everything will flow. So until next time, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for listening and have a great day.